The occult from the Latin word occultus, clandestine, hidden, secret, is knowledge of the hidden or knowledge of the paranormal as opposed to facts and knowledge of the measurable, usually referred to as science. The term is sometimes taken to mean knowledge that is meant only for certain people or that must be kept hidden. But for most practicing occultists it is simply the study of a deeper spiritual reality that extends pure reason and the physical sciences. The terms esoteric and arcane can also be used to describe the occult, in addition to their meanings unrelated to the supernatural. The term occult sciences was used in the 16th century to refer to astrology, alchemy, and natural magic. The term occultism emerged in 19th century France, where it came to be associated with various French esoteric groups connected to Eliphas Levy and Pappus, and in 1875 was introduced into the English language by the esotericist Helena Blavatsky. Throughout the 20th century, the term was used idiosyncratically by a range of different authors, but by the 21st century was commonly employed, including by academic scholars of esotericism, to refer to a range of esoteric currents that developed in the mid-19th century and their descendants. Occultism is thus often used to categorize such esoteric traditions as spiritualism, theosophy, anthroposophy, the hermetic order of the Golden Dawn, and New Age. Particularly since the late 20th century, various authors have used the occult as a substantivized adjective. In this usage, the occult is a category into which varied beliefs and practices are placed if they are considered to fit into neither religion nor science. The occult, in this sense is very broad, encompassing such phenomenon as beliefs in vampires or fairies and movements like ufology and parapsychology. In that same period, occult and culture were combined to form the neologism occulture. Initially used in the industrial music scene, it was later given scholarly applications. Occult <inaudible> <inaudible> sciences <inaudible> The idea of «occult sciences» developed in the 16th century. The term usually encompassed three practices — astrology, alchemy, and natural magic although sometimes various forms of divination were also included rather than being subsumed under natural magic. These were grouped together because, according to the historian of religion Wouter Hangraff, each one of them engaged in systematic investigation of nature and natural processes, in the context of theoretical frameworks that relied heavily on a belief in occult qualities, virtues or forces. Although there are areas of overlap between these different occult sciences, they are separate and in some cases practitioners of one would reject the others as being illegitimate. During the Enlightenment, the term occult increasingly came to be seen as intrinsically incompatible with the concept of science. From that point on, use of the term occult sciences implied a conscious polemic against mainstream science. In his 1871 book Primitive Culture, the anthropologist Edward Tyler used the term occult science", as a synonym for magic. <inaudible> occult qualities Occult qualities are properties that have no known rational explanation. In the Middle Ages, for example, magnetism was considered an occult quality. Ether classical element is another such element. Newton's contemporaries severely criticized his theory that gravity was effected through action at a distance as a cult. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Occultism. In the English-speaking world, prominent figures in the development of occultism included Helena Blavatsky and other figures associated with her Theosophical Society, senior figures in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn like William Wynne Westcott and Samuel Liddell Mathers, as well as other individuals such as Pascal Beverly Randolph, Emma Hardinge Britton, Arthur Edward Waite, and—in the early 20th century—Alistair Crowley, Dion Fortune, and Israel Rigardi. By the end of the 19th century, occultist ideas had also spread into other parts of Europe, such as Germany, Austria Hungary, and Italy. Unlike older forms of esotericism, occultism does not reject scientific progress or modernity. Levy had stressed the need to solve the conflict between science and religion, something that he believed could be achieved by turning to what he thought was the ancient wisdom found in magic. The scholar of esotericism Antoine Fevre noted that rather than outright accepting 
the triumph of scientism. Occultists sought an alternative solution, trying to integrate scientific progress or modernity with a global vision that will serve to make the vacuousness of materialism more apparent. Hanegraaff remarked that occultism was essentially an attempt to adapt esotericism to the disenchanted world, a post-Enlightenment society in which growing scientific discovery had eradicated the dimension of irreducible mystery previously present. In doing so, he noted, occultism distanced itself from the traditional esotericism, which accepted the premise of an enchanted world. According to historian of esotericism Nicholas Goodrick Clark, occultist groups typically seek proofs and demonstrations by recourse to scientific tests or terminology. Another feature of these occultists is that, unlike earlier esotericists, they often openly distanced themselves from Christianity, in some cases like that of Crowley, even adopting explicitly anti-Christian stances. This reflected how pervasive the influence of secularization had been on all areas of European society. In rejecting Christianity, these occultists sometimes turned towards pre-Christian belief systems and embraced forms of modern paganism, while others instead took influence from the religions of Asia, such as Hinduism and Buddhism. In various cases, certain occultists did both. Another characteristic of these occultists was the emphasis that they placed on the spiritual realization of the individual, an idea that would strongly influence the 20th century New Age and human potential movement. This spiritual realization was encouraged both through traditional Western occult sciences like alchemy and ceremonial magic, but by the start of the 20th century had also begun to include practices drawn from non-Western contexts, such as yoga. Although occultism is distinguished from earlier forms of esotericism, many occultists have also been involved in older esoteric currents. For instance, occultists like François Charles Barlet and Rudolf Steiner were also theosophers, adhering to the ideas of the early modern Christian thinker Jakob Bohm, and seeking to integrate ideas from Bohmian theosophy and occultism. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The earliest known usage of the term, occultism, is in the French language, as l'occultisme. In this form it appears in A. de l'Estrange's article on Esoterisme chrétien that was published in Jean-Baptiste Richard de Randonvilliers' Dictionnaire des mots nouveaux Dictionary of New Words in 1842. The French esotericist Eliphas Lévy then used the term in his influential book on ritual magic, Dogme et Ritual de la Haute Magie, first published in 1856. His use of the term deliberately acknowledged earlier practices that, since the Renaissance, had been termed occult sciences, or occult philosophy. It was from Levy's usage of the term that it gained wider usage. According to Fevre, Levy was the principal exponent of esotericism in Europe and the United States. At that time, the earliest use of the term occultism in the English language appears to be in A Few Questions to Haraf. An 1875 article published in the American Spiritualist magazine, Spiritual Scientist. The article had been written by Helena Blavatsky, a Russian émigré living in the United States who founded the religion of theosophy. Various 20th century writers on the subject used the term occultism in different ways. Some writers, such as the German philosopher Theodor W. Adorno in his Theses Against Occultism, employed the term as a broad synonym for irrationality. In his 1950 book L'Occultisme, Robert Amadou used the term as a synonym for esotericism, an approach that the later scholar of esotericism Marco Posse suggested left the term superfluous. Unlike Amadou, other writers saw occultism and esotericism as different, albeit related, phenomena. In the 1970s, the sociologist Edward Tyriakian distinguished between occultism, which he used in reference to practices, techniques, and procedures, and esotericism, which he defined as the religious or philosophical belief systems on which such practices are based. 
This division was initially adopted by the early academic scholar of esotericism, Antoine Fevre, although he later abandoned it. It has been rejected by most scholars who study esotericism. A different division was used by the traditionalist author Rene Guénon, who used esotericism to describe what he believed was the traditionalist, inner teaching at the heart of most religions, while occultism was used pejoratively to describe new religions and movements that he disapproved of, such as spiritualism, theosophy, and various secret societies. Genon's use of this terminology was adopted by later writers like Serge Houghton and Luc Benoist. As noted by Hainegraaff, Genon's use of these terms are rooted in his traditionalist beliefs and cannot be accepted as scholarly valid. The term occultism derives from the older term occult, much as the term esotericism derives from the older term esoteric. However, the historian of esotericism Wouter Hangraff stated that it was important to distinguish between the meanings of the term occult and occultism. Occultism is not a homogenous movement, and is widely diverse. Over the course of its history, the term occultism has been used in various different ways. However, in contemporary uses, occultism commonly refers to forms of esotericism that developed in the 19th century and their 20th century derivations. In a descriptive sense, it has been used to describe forms of esotericism which developed in 19th century France, especially in the neo Martinist environment. According to the historian of esotericism Antoine Fevre, it is with the esotericist Eliphas Levy that the occultist current properly so called first appears. Other prominent French esotericists involved in developing occultism included Pappas, Stanislas de Guaida, Josephine Pelladin, Georges Albert Pouillou de Pouvoivel, and Jean Bricot. Etic uses of the term In the mid-1990s, a new definition of «occultism» was put forth by Hangraff. According to Hangraff, the term «occultism» can be used not only for the 19th-century groups which openly self-described using that term, but can also be used in reference to «the type of esotericism that they represent». Seeking to define «occultism» so that the term would be suitable as an etic category. For scholars, Hangraff devised the following definition. A category in the study of religions, which comprises all attempts by esotericists to come to terms with a disenchanted world or, alternatively, by people in general to make sense of esotericism from the perspective of a disenchanted secular world. Hangraff noted that this etic usage of the term would be independent of emic usages of the term employed by occultists and other esotericists themselves. In this definition, occultism covers many esoteric currents that have developed from the mid 19th century onward, including spiritualism, theosophy, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and the New Age. Employing this etic understanding of occultism, Hangraff argued that its development could begin to be seen in the work of the Swedish esotericist Emanuel Swedenborg and in the mesmerist movement of the 18th century, although added that occultism only emerged in fully developed form as spiritualism, a movement that developed in the United States during the mid 19th century. Posse suggested that the use of Hangraff's definition might cause confusion by presenting a group of 19th century esotericists who called themselves occultists as just one part of a broader category of esotericists whom scholars would call occultists. The occult The term, occult, has also been used as a substantivized adjective as the occult, a term that has been particularly widely used among journalists and sociologists. This term was popularized by the publication of Colin Wilson's 1971 book The Occult. This term has been used as an intellectual waste basket, into which a wide array of beliefs and practices have been placed because they do not fit readily into the categories of religion or science. According to Hangraff, the occult is a category into which gets placed a range of beliefs from spirits or fairies to parapsychological experiments, from UFO abductions to oriental mysticism, from vampire legends to channeling, and so on. A culture The neologism, a culture, 
was used within the industrial music scene of the late 20th century, and was probably coined by one of its central figures, the musician and occultist Genesis P. Orridge. It was in this scene that the scholar of religion Christopher Partridge encountered the term. Partridge used the term in an academic sense. He stated that a culture was the new spiritual environment in the West, the reservoir feeding new spiritual springs, the soil in which new spiritualities are growing. See also <laughs> <laughs>